Hello all, here we are with another video. And in this video, I will be talking about Gail King. Now you all know I like to give a brief intro before I go in deep, so here we go. Gail King was born on December 28, 1954 in Chevy Chase, Maryland, to Scott and Peggy King. Her father was an electrical engineer and her mother was a homemaker. Because of her father's work, she spent most of her life in Turkey, where she attended school. She later returned to Maryland and later attended and graduated from University of Maryland in 1976 with a double degree in psychology and sociology. Her career started as a production assistant at WJZ TV in Baltimore. That is where she met Oprah Winfrey, believe it or not. They bonded on the evening when a snowstorm was moving in and 22 year old Oprah at the time was doing the 6 p.m. news anchor invited 21 year old Gail, a production assistant at the time to stay at her near house. Back when she had only one house, this is Oprah. She also said this, when I said I didn't have any clothes with me, she said, you can remind. And when I said I didn't have any underwear, she said, you can borrow mine. It's clean. This is what um, King recalled in 2015. The next day, they went to the mall and Renfrey, who was making 22000 a year at the time, which is a lot back then, blew King's mind by dropping $19.99 on a two-for-one sweater set. Oh, yes. They've been friends ever since. Meanwhile, Gil married Bill Bumpus, an attorney. They were married from 1982 to 1993. They have a son and a daughter together. Gil's career has been all over television and magazines, as we know. She's been a host of Gil King's show on XM Satellite Radio and now CBS and so on and so forth with her many career endeavors. Let's get personal and scandalous. As we all know, Oprah and Stedman have been involved for many years. They began dating in 1986. They were actually engaged in 1992, but they decided to end the engagement, especially when her career was taken off. However, it was important that one of the reasons she didn't marry him is because being married requires a different way of being in this world. She went on to say that her longtime partner's interpretations of what it means to be a husband and what it would mean for me to be a wife would have been pretty traditional and I would not have been able to fit into that. Then there's the relationship she has with Gail. You see, Gail and Oprah are really good old friends. They have been there for one another in the very early days of their career. I don't think they're lesbians or anything of the kind. It was even told back when they first met in 1976 when they both were working at Baltimore TV station. They knew each other, but they first really bonded on an evening when a snowstorm was moving in. And I told you about all of this already. And you know, Oprah was 22, who was the 6 p.m. news anchor, blah, 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 moving forward here. And you know, the whole story about the clothes and things of that nature. Now, what we really need to do is, is we need to get deep into the history of everything. So let's bypass all of this PG crap and let's really get dark. Okay, yes, um, we're all happy for Gail and Oprah's career and opening doors for many journalists thereafter. But it's their involvement in the elite that is questionable. You see, in order for the elite to be able to control someone of color slash black and also not be accused of being racist or anything of the kind, so what they do, they send their top elite puppets to do it. If you look back, Oprah, Gail have been responsible for the start of the future downfall of many black slash color legends. Do they know that they're, you know, they've pretty much been a part of that? Probably not. I mean, their minds has been fried and brainwashed for years now. I mean, you all have to understand that there are six companies that control the world. So let's break that down. 
Okay, but first notate that GE does not own NBC or Comcast or any media anymore, so notes like that. So that sixth company is now Comcast. And Tom Warner doesn't own AOL, so Huffington Post isn't affiliated with them. So just to update, the company that most people associate with mobile phones enter show business in June of 2018 of last year, when a district, U.S. District Court, judge approved its acquisition of Time Warner that got sold by Spectrum, all while giving AT&T command over Warner Brothers, HBO, and Turner. Then Disney took over 21st Century Fox, but propped this wave of mega mergers, Silicon Valley, of course. Netflix has become an entertainment powerhouse, Amazon isn't far behind, let's be realistic here. Meanwhile, Apple, Facebook, and Google are all dipping their toes in the content pool. Yes, consolidation gives traditional mass media a chance to stave off tech domination. So if you troll down to the TV stations, radio stations, they all own, and none of it's black owned, by the way, I'm just saying, you would see who really hold the strings who main goal is to always control the narrative, all while trying to keep their hands clean. So they get the powerhouses like Oprah and Gayle to expose black color legends. Do they know what they're doing? As I stated before, maybe, maybe absolutely not. But they've been in the game so long and their power is almost equivalent to any white news reporter so their race and color are often blinded and overlooked when they make a lot of decisions about some of their interviews. To them, it's a hot story and they've made it too damn far to compromise it for some black person. This is why they're often picked because having them to do it is like having a white person do it, but just in a black person slash color person's body. They get the best of both worlds. Oprah and Gail stopped being pro-black decades ago. It's all about money now. Think about it. 